we were doing some flooring work up there and we had to do it at night and I was up there working and there was probably about 50 maybe yards uh, between the house and where we could park a truck and I had to keep going back and forth to the truck and every time I was going back and forth I could hear something rustling in the woods and I am a relatively jumpy person and about the third time I went back through and I heard this whatever rattling in the woods I said you know what this can wait till tomorrow <laughs> I locked up the house and went back got my truck and left Hi, I'm Merrick Keniston. I'm a filmmaker and a student at the University of Connecticut. More importantly though, this is Cornwall, and I'm proud to call it my home. This is where I grew up and where I've had some of the most memorable experiences of my life. Like many small New England towns though, Cornwall has its own unique version of the American ghost story. Cornwall has become notoriously associated with the curse of Dudley Town. Although it was never a formal town, Dudley Town was a village once located in the hills surrounding the town. Legend has it that during the reign of King Henry VIII, a nobleman by the name of Sir Edmund Dudley was beheaded for treason, involving a plot to overthrow the crown. It is said that a curse was put on his family so that death and horror would follow them indefinitely. It's even believed that this curse followed the family once they migrated to America. Edmund's great-grandson, William Dudley, is believed to have settled in Guilford, Connecticut. William's descendants, Abel, Gideon, and Barzillai, would later buy land in the now infamous Dudley town. It was during this time that many of the village's inhabitants met their fates by what is believed to be supernatural or otherwise very unusual circumstances. Here lies one of the first victims of the Dudley Town curse, Mr. William Tanner. Many of the incidents, however, can be explained with a modern understanding of medicine and science. I, I believe it's true. What happened was it was a disease that went through the colony. Okay. And actually that's what killed off the population. Uh, you know, actually I think it was just a, a case of uh, bad luck for the people that settled in up there. They tried farming and uh, establishing a community in a really difficult area. Uh, well, I've done a lot of reading on it and apparently uh, there's all sorts of theories um, that possibly there was lead contamination in the little town because it is on top of a hill and there are lead mines in the area and the lead had an effect on the people. There's also stories about it possibly being, part of it being on an ancient uh, Native American burial ground, and that's probably where the curse came, came from. In the 1920s, hundreds of acres where Dudley Town once laid was acquired by the Dark Entry Forest Association, who continue to own the land to this day. They turned the woodland area into a residential community for their members and have worked tirelessly to preserve the wilderness that they own. At one time, Dudley Town was publicly accessible to hikers and nature lovers alike. But the dark entry community has faced relentless torment from trespassers and wannabe ghost hunters. In 1999, the association closed their doors to the public indefinitely for their own privacy and safety. I think it makes it worse by trying to control it, not allow people up there. I think you get more people wanting to go up there because of that. Yeah. Why are you not letting us go up there and look at it? Yeah. So they're more they're intrigued about what's going on or what is up there. You know, the people that own the property up there certainly have a right to keep people off their property, um, you know, because they're liable should they ever get injured and anything along those lines. Does that help perpetuate the myth a little bit? Maybe, perhaps. Uh, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's, they do have a right to keep people off there. Um, you kind of have to wonder if maybe it makes it more of a pain in the neck by completely closing it for the residents because it makes more and more people want to go and see it and, and go up there and walk through it. Um, you know, you certainly can respect the people's property rights. I mean, it all is all privately held land. Um, and it's too bad our little town needs something um, 
you know, other than a covered bridge to get people to come for tourism and such. And, you know, that might be something to pursue at some time. On January of 2017, myself and seven other filmmakers set out to tell the true, unadulterated story of Dudley Town and the supposed curse. We began first by contacting the Dark Entry Forest Association, but as expected, we are denied both access to the land as well as any form of help from the organization. Hi, Eric. This is calling from the Cornwall Historical Society. I wanted to let you know that I did receive your message. And um, while I think that your project is a good one, um, I can tell you right out the gate that the Dark Entry Forest Association has just recently um, not allowed someone to come in and do a similar project. At this point though, we had become too emotionally involved in the story just to simply give up. We have pledged ourselves to the story of Dudley Town. Over the years, the accounts and causes of those who died at Dudley Town have varied. In an effort to remain consistent with the myth, here is what we found. Abel Dudley died in the early 1770s. Locals reported him as distant and slightly demented. He probably suffered from common senality. August 1774, the Donoram Carter household dies of an unidentified illness. Soon after, the Nathaniel Carter family moves to Binghamton, New York, where three of them are killed by Native Americans, including an infant child. In 1792, it is believed that Gershon Hollister died in the house of William Tanner, who also died there. In 1804, Revolutionary War General Heman Swift's wife was struck by lightning and killed instantly. He reportedly went mad and died soon after. Like Abel Dudley, Swift was also very old and most likely senile, as well as heartbroken. Towards the end of the 1800s, the wife of an Irish laborer, often referred to as John Patrick Brophy, dies of consumption. His children are accused of theft and are never seen again. Soon after, the Brophy house is set ablaze, and John himself is never seen again. The last incident happened in the 1920s, years after the village was abandoned. Dr. Clark and his wife bought property where Dudley Town once laid. One summer day, Dr. Clark is forced to return to New York State to visit a patient. Upon his return, it is believed that his wife had become raving mad. It has recently become believed that this story was a cruel fabrication. The Clark family continues to live in the area to this day. Out of respect to the dead, the townsfolk, and those still affected by the men, we decided not to try and enter the forbidden forest. Instead, we explored a similar settlement a few miles away from Dudley Town. It was there that we uncovered several artifacts that could have been used at the same time Dudley Town was a village. This experience, as well as the artifacts we found, may not have even been possible due to the trespassing and vandalism that continues to go on at Dudley Town. Maybe someday things will be different.